Hello, welcome back to the channel, and we're on the Fiesta again today. Hopefully, we're going to get the clutch out and back in again. Uh, we might get a little, little test drive out of it, see what other issues crop up. Before any of that though, I want to give a couple of special mentions, I would think, to uh, a couple of, couple of subscribers. Um, some nice comments on the last video. Uh, obviously, I asked for a bit of feedback, I suppose, from you, you know, on how the content is for you. Um, I've had some, very constructive, basically, keep things as they are. Uh, so, Dylan Evans, Dan Hendaz, thank you. And I want to give a special mention to Matt Beamer, who's basically put a post of recommendation on his channel for his subscribers to see. Um, you know, he's got 5,000 odd subscribers, so thank you for that. Now, clutch, I suppose. We've bought one, we've got one. We better remove it from our total there. So it was, so now it's actually a clutch and concentric slave cylinder in one box, and it was 132 pound and 73p. It's an LUK one. So we're going to start on getting that sorted. Let's do it. <clears throat> Alright, so we've started on the top end. Got the battery out, the battery tray. I've been trying to get this bolt out. I've tried a set of mollies sort of on the other side of it. But it's not twisting, not turning. So probably going to have to leave it and try and sort of wedge it out of the way. Uh, I've got the cover off the gear cables. I'm going to whip them off now. Drive shaft nut is removed. I'm going to have to get a new one because it's sort of disintegrated. Drive shaft is moving just about. Took some clout in, but we've got it there. And I'll, uh, yeah, get these gear cables off. So the cover's just on clips. Easy enough. I've taken this one off and all you do, need to do is sort of twist this bit. Wherever it's at, this bit twists. And then you just pull it out of the little fork thing that it sits in. And this has got a button to release, like the ball joint if you will. That and then just, just pops off. So, if we twist this. Pull it out, and then oh, might need a bar to get that off there. Ah, or not? Lovely. Gear cables out of the way. Now I might take this housing off. I might not. This sort of some eight mils. Just give us a bit more room, won't it? Seeing as we're we're on the floor and limited for space. Right then. Plastic covers off now. We can now see the filler plug as well where we're going to obviously put the gear oil back in when we lose it um, next probably this engine mount engine steady get that off there'll be a starter motor up the back somewhere probably have to jack that side up to get a bit more height so I'll do that now <clears throat> now I haven't optimized this space yet as you can see it was sort of a bit of a lawn but it hasn't taken long for me to churn it up and ruin it. Um, obviously, I'd like it all concrete in, but it takes time and money, doesn't it? So for now, I've just got my great uncle's old duvet, because this was his house, and then a uh, parcel shelf out of the Ibiza, just as a lying down board, I suppose, so I don't get mud up, shit up, pissed wet through. There we are. Let's do this engine mount. Oh, I've already cracked these off, so this should whiz them out, no bother. Just 
fall away. And I just like to put the bolts back through so we know which one goes where. If I've got that the right way around, I don't think I have. And I'm just going to sort of set it aside over there somewhere well out the way. So up here, this clamp, it's two 13s. All this drive shaft, we need to take the other wheel off, obviously, and the drive shaft nut. So we'll do that now. Right, now the bolts on these bottom ball joints are renowned for uh, snapping, rounding, uh, seizing in there, so I'm fully expecting to have to replace them. 16s, I think. Let's see what happens. We've got a, a T50 on the other side of this bolt. My plan is just to uh, milk it out. If it comes, it comes. If it snaps, we'll get a new one and smash that one out. Let's do it. Smash it out, it is. Bring a punch with me, so I'm gonna have to use this quarter drive extension. But luckily, it's loose now. So we got a couple of these, we may as well replace the other side bolt as well. And this arm should now come out. Bit of lube, a bit of chisel. Can. something I should have had is a punch obviously it's sitting in the centre of there it's at work and it's like an hour round trip or an hour of time wasted to get it but I'll be able to clean that up with a tap and die set so I'm not worried lovely other side now right one thing I'm going to start doing uh, now that I'm obviously working from home um, and the parts supplier isn't a five minute drive away. It's like obviously an hour round trip. I'm gonna start making a note of all the things I'm gonna need to put it back together. So we're now gonna need a pair of bottom ball joint bolts, a pair of drive shaft nuts, and I'm also gonna write any tools I need from work. So I'll need my tap and die set, obviously to repair the threads on them drive shafts. So we'll just jot that down now and then um, hopefully the list isn't too long <laughs> by the end of it. Probably gonna need some gear oil. Obviously if it's, you know, still golden, I'll just put the, the old stuff back in, but if it's, you know, got a tinge of brown or gray to it, we'll just refresh it. Um, I'll probably get a liter anyway, because there's gonna be some that I'll lose that I'll, you know, I won't be able to catch. Um, cause there isn't a drain plug, it's gonna sort of come out of either drive shaft hole. Uh, so yeah, that's that and then instead of having to do three, four trips to get the parts that I haven't written down, I've just tried remembering them, we can do one trip, get everything, make it more efficient. There we are. Now you might be wondering why I'm messing around with the chisel, I'm trying to get this ball joint out instead of using a ball joint splitter and it's because we want to reuse this ball joint use a splitter nine times out of ten 
it's going to split this dust cover then when it comes to MOT in it it's going to fail and we'll have to change it again anyway and then we're ball lake getting these rivets out better off putting a full suspension arm on it we don't want to get into that so chisel tap down on it with a hammer obviously a bit of lube comes out lovely most times right we've got the drive shaft out the hub now now we need to try and get it out of the gearbox obviously we're probably going to lose a bit of oil so I've just got this old traffic film remover tub with a rectangle cut out the front of it it's going to allow me to catch it and I can also pour it into a 20 litre container that I've got at work I need to bring it home before I dispose of it all responsibly let's get a pry bar and try and pop that out of there Now there's a chance this might not come out. Obviously, we don't want to sort of crack the, the gearbox housing. And if we have to lift it down with that drive shaft in, then we have to lift it down with the drive shaft in. Well, this one's come out nicely. Let that drain. Alright, so this one should come out now. I'm just going to leave the other one in. We'll have to lift it down with the gearbox. Because if I prize any harder, it's probably going to crack the gearbox casing. And we don't want that. Oh no, no. Right, now for the bit I've been putting off bell housing bolts at the top. Now, there may be two or three. There's one in there you can just about see. There'll be another further that way. There might be a starter motor bolt as well. There's just no access. I mean, this sort of thermostat housing is sort of in the way. I can't get the ECU out, so I can't really move that out of the way. Wiring in the way. So I'm just going to have to sort of rag everything over to one side while I get the bolts but uh, not going to be able to film it I don't think so I'll just come back when they're out right I've actually managed to make more space for myself than I, I thought I was going to so we can now see that 10mm starter motor bolt and there's a 30mm there with the stud on which had this bracket on so that bell housing bolts out got that one to do and then that 10 mil I managed to sort of twist the ECU around and out the way I had to take this plastic sort of covering off the uh, wiring loom so hopefully I can remember which way around that goes and the gear cables are sort of up out of the way as well now not too bad two bolts left up here and then everything else is underneath lovely right that's them two bolts out. That should be everything up top now. If it isn't, we won't know till it's too late and the gearbox is uh, crushing me. So wish me luck. Right then, we're just down low now. And we've got a 10mm bolt and a 13mm there to undo. We don't need to worry about the wires on the back of the starter because it's just going to sort of dangle out the way. The battery's already off. And I think there's a bit of a crank sensor, I think, there. That plastic sort of thing. I've just put some blue roll in the drive shaft hole. Hopefully it'll slow the gear oil down. Stop me getting pissed wet through. Nothing worse than gear oil on your fucking clothes. And hopefully we're ready to drop out. Right, so I think that is everything removed. Got all these bell housing bolts out. I've left one in just because I need something to hold it whilst I undo that engine mount up there. Um, if I start loosening this now, we should see the engine and gearbox start to separate, which it is doing. So that's a good sign that uh, everything's undone. So that'll do for now. I'm going to get a jack and a bit of wood to support this engine 
and then we'll undo that engine mount and then uh, yeah see how squished I get let's have a laugh right I've got that last bolt out now the engine mount is off might just have to take these out that's all because that stud is probably not going to allow us to come low enough to pass this bit of chassis leg the other thing I haven't mentioned is the subframe and that's because I'm hoping we'll pass it without having to remove it with the drive shaft in I'm not too sure because it is touching it right now so we'll have to see hopefully I can get the drive shaft out with the gearbox on the floor that's the plan anyway right and we're almost at the point at the reason why I try and avoid doing gearboxes clutches on the floor the ball ache to get out and they're even worse to put back in but it's doable so we'll give it a go just got my old uh, Halloween costume just to put over me my top half you know to protect from gear oil and a bit of cushioning you know because they can be heavy these so hopefully I've removed everything and uh, here we go there's three bolts on the start and not two bear with me right attempt number two Drive shafts wanting to bury itself. Look, I know I nearly killed it with my hammer and my chisel, but it's all right. We can bring you back to life. And there we are. Now, if there's one thing worse than gear oil, it's CV grease, and we now have both to contend with. Just taking the drive shaft out of the sort of inner cup. I'll just put my, my, my gloves over there just to stop me getting grease everywhere. You can see all the diesel on top of here as well. So I think what I thought had happened has actually happened. All oh, the nose pissed wet through. So I think that clutch is contaminated with diesel. So I'll whip that old one off. Get this uh, slave cylinder out. Make sure the new ones are the same and then we'll put it back together. Right, so new clutch here. If you compare it to the old one, you can see the material on this. There's one right down. Now I can't actually smell any diesel on it. So I think it is just one. You can see here this friction material is one right down to these rivets. So even if it hadn't been leaking diesel, it was still going to need doing anyway. Next thing you want to check is that the splines go onto the input shaft. Something like this. Come on. Yeah. Because if they don't go on and you don't check, you're going to be taking it all apart again. Uh, and then obviously on these, it's marked gearbox side. I think that's in German. So that obviously wants to be on the pressure plate. Like that. I always like to check that the bolt pattern is the same on the new one when you compare it to the old one which looks like it is and if you're really being picky you can sort of check the height of the like fingers as well all looks good this looks the same one thing you don't want to do you don't want to squeeze this um because without fluid in it it's not lubricated and it can ruin the seals inside of there so don't squeeze that right let's get them swapped just got some eight mils 
three of them. Quarter drive ratchet. They're not that tight. There will be a specific torque setting if you uh, really fancy doing it properly. But I, uh, you know, just a little nip with a quarter drive is all I've ever done, and I've never had a problem. So that just slides off. Now when it comes to lining this clutch up, obviously you want it dead central. You can get clutch alignment tools, I think about 20 quid. But I, I have always eyeballed it and uh, you get the odd one that's slightly off and you have to redo it, but usually you're on the lift, it's not as much of a ball ache as being on the floor. So I'm going to line this up and then I'll nip these 10 mils up. Um, I'm going to do them opposite so that it's sort of torqued down nice and evenly. And then we're ready to put the gearbox back in. Nothing got dangling in the way. It's going to get trapped. Wires, gear cables, anything like that. Gets all your body parts, does that? I've ripped my gloves. I think this Fiesta's trying to play a strip clutch replacement with me. I've had to take a layer of clothing off. I'm gonna get that engine mount on, my gearbox obviously secure in the vehicle, and take the jack out. And that'll do for today. The sun is set over there. And child care duties call. Right then, we're on the next day now. I've been to get my bits. So we've got some CV boot clamps for that drive shaft we've had to remove. Uh, they were uh, £5.82. I've got a pair of new pinch bolts and nuts. For the bottom ball joints and the rain's just started fucking coming down. Um, I've got two litres of gear oil. I think I'm only going to need one of these. But we paid 28.75 for two litres of this and them two pinch bolts. Uh, now drive shaft nuts is going to be a main deal of part only. Um, for now we've got like a box of fucking bolts and nuts and all sorts at work so i've raided that i've got 10 or 12 different drive shaft nuts hopefully something in there is going to be the same thread size as what we've got on these drive shafts time will tell but the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to see if we can get a decent clutch pedal now obviously the gearbox is bolted in two bolts holding it three bolts on the engine mount um I don't want to bolt anything else on. I want to make sure I can get a decent pedal. There's no point, you know, if the part's faulty or I fucked up somewhere along the way and we put it all back together and bleed it right at the end and then realise, shit, we can't get a pedal. Obviously, we're going to have to strip everything out again. I'm doing it this way. We've only got five or six bolts to undo to swap that, uh, that slave cylinder or, you know, whatever else it might be that's causing it. So I've got the pressure bleeder, and let's uh, get it bled up. Right, so pressure bleeder's on. Pumped it up to just, just over a bar, I think. And then down here, there, it's a bleed nipple. 
so that's the clutch pipe there and this bleed nipple we should just be able to turn with fingers well that's the pressure that's going to stop us and hopefully we see it spits some air out like that just wait for a nice steady stream of fluid which that could well be and release the pressure and see how the pedal feels come on oh it's a bit muddy out here Oh yeah, doesn't feel too bad at all that. Happy. Let's box it up. Right, I've managed to clean the threads up on these drive shafts. <clears throat> Found some nuts that fit. Probably going to be these ones. Because to lock these, you've got to have like a a notch in the end of the drive shaft which these don't have whereas these are obviously self-locking so we'll pick one when we come to reassemble it Right, drive shafts are in, starter motors in, all the lower bell housing bolts are in. I've got the gear oil to put in, and cables to put back on, reverse light switch to plug back in, and then I think we can drop it back on its wheels. Right, so gear oil before we put all this plastic casing back round and gear cables back on. Just gonna. use a new litre, top it off with that, hopefully it should be enough. And this is like a, a level plug as well as a filler plug, so we just want to top it up till it starts trickling out of this hole. Right, that's trickling out of there now. So, plenty of gear oil in it, because I've got it jacked up slightly, I'm just going to let that trickle until it stops and then I'll, I'll put the plug back in. Right then, we're all back together, battery and that's back in, ECU, battery tray's all bolted down, everything we've had off has been put back, apart from, just need to do the wheels, and then see if we've got drive so fingers crossed
just got obviously engine system fault warning on so I'll, uh, I'll grab the scanner from work and we'll see what's going on with that. <laughs> 